Hey everybody, I'm finally back with another video for you and I know it's been a while since I've uploaded anything or you know just chatted with you guys and there's a really good reason for that. As you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about depression and obviously not just depression in general but my depression. So this is kind of a, it's a little bit of an uncomfortable topic for me in the sense that I don't, I, I'm not telling you guys this because I want you to feel bad for me. This is what I'm going through and I think it's a really good thing to talk about because I feel like sometimes depression kind of gets brushed under the rug and people don't really think that it's a real thing sometimes. Like they just, especially, you know, obviously people who've never experienced depression or had a family member who's experienced depression. You just don't understand what depression entails and what happens when you get depressed. So I just wanted to sit down and talk about my experience and how I'm coping and dealing with it. And just to like keep you guys in the loop, just so you know, you know, what's going on. And you know, I, I feel a lot better just kind of getting it out there because it's a pain in the butt having to pretend that you're all right when you're really not. You're just, you feel awful and you just kind of have to go around with this fake smile plastered on your face and and hope that nobody notices that there's anything wrong. And then at the same time, you're kind of mad that nobody notices that you're faking it. But that is a completely other thing. We'll, we'll just start from the beginning. I was diagnosed with depression uh, last September. It was September 20... Fifth, I believe 2015 yeah um, I had been feeling kind of down and just out of it for you know most of September and the start of the school year just wasn't good for me and I was just feeling really just not myself and I talked with my mom about it because um, my mom has experience with depression so I just kind of told her how I was feeling and we kind of just discussed the symptoms and got to the point where my mom was like, maybe you should go to the doctor and just, you know, talk to her and find out what's going on. Because when you go to the doctor, they give you this like, kind of like depression test, I guess. And you basically just answer a bunch of questions. I think it's like, you, I think it's like one between one and five, one being the worst or something and five being not it, one or the other. And you just basically, you take this test, I think there's like 16 or 17 questions, and that's supposed to determine if you're depressed. I'm sure it's not foolproof and uh, not totally and completely, you know, 100% accurate, but um, I took the test and it was concluded that I was depressed. A friend of mine asked me, what do you think triggered it or um, why, why do you think it just kind of just happened all of a sudden? And, and I thought about that and I think not like I'm not gonna get super deep into this or anything but basically for the last couple of years I've just been under a lot of stress and pressure with school and just some stuff at home and it just kind of was building and building and building I think and I kept trying you know like I, I was coping I was coping I was trying to cope I was trying to you know, uh, be this a successful student adult type person. Um, I don't know if that's making sense, but I was just trying to be responsible. And you know, I, I had two jobs for the longest time. I was going to school. I, you know, and trying to do my work and handing, trying to get stuff handed in on time. It just kind of like all snowballed together. Like it was like I just took on too much like mentally I just couldn't mentally physically I just couldn't handle it anymore and I guess you know come September my it was my starting of my fourth year of university and I just I guess I just kind of cracked and I just felt so so down and I just I mean I had no motivation I I was sad all the time I just I didn't care about school, I didn't care about work, I didn't care about my friends, I didn't, like I just felt I wanted to be alone and I just didn't want to talk to anybody and I just, I just felt so alone I guess and I think the hardest part was as a Christian, you know, we we talk about how, oh we, we're not, we're never alone, we always have Jesus and, and this and this and this, but 
The thing is, Christians are not immune to these mental diseases or mental illnesses. And that's one thing I think people need to realize as well is that just because we're Christians doesn't mean we don't go through problems and we don't have issues. And it's just something that happens when you, I, like I said, for me, it was, I, I took on too much in my life. I was trying to do too much. I was trying to be too much. I was trying to be like, a, I guess someone, somebody that I kind of wasn't. And, uh, it was just, it was just all too much. And the end result was depression. And I guess, like I said, I finally cracked and that was it. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. Back to what I was saying about being a Christian, we shouldn't feel alone because we have God. That, that is true. As in, I, I didn't, I never felt like, I mean, I felt like I was alone but not alone alone. Like I always knew that God was there watching me and, and he was there for me when I needed him. I feel like I'm not making sense, I'm sorry. I, I'm like, I've kind of like got all these thoughts in my head and it's just like, word vomit. What I'm trying to say is that I could not have gotten this far and coped with my depression as well as I kind of have, I guess. Well, I wouldn't say I've coped with it well, well, but to an extent where I'm not like, suicidal or anything but if I didn't have God and if I didn't have Jesus and if I didn't have the support of my parents and co-workers and uh, the doctor and counselors and stuff like that I would not be where I am right now my faith especially has played a huge part in me even getting to this point like I just finished my last uh, exam for uh, this semester, so I finished my fourth year of university, and you know it, it's been a very long journey. And this last year was just, or this last I guess school some year was just so difficult. I I had to get a ton of extensions on my assignments, and I wasn't doing well on the the midterms or the final stuff. And it just it, it was really difficult this this school year, and. I had to work very, very hard to even finish, and I attribute that to number one, God. I would never be able to do any of that without Him, because I literally, like, no motivation. I had no motivation to do literally anything. I was putting off my schoolwork until the last minute, like, it was just, I'm already a procrastinator, and this just amplified my procrastination. But I couldn't have done it without God and I couldn't have done it without my mom. Like seriously, my mom has been so, so supportive over the last year and I just, I would never finish school without her. She helped me so much and I'm so thankful for her. Um, so thank you mom if you're watching. So I'm not going to tell you what the symptoms of depression are, I'm just going to tell you what my symptoms of depression were. So basically, um, I've had a lack of motivation. A, I just I don't care about things like I said I didn't I I was having a hard time while well, I am having a hard time uh, keeping in contact with my friends and going out like I haven't left the house in the last eight months I haven't really been leaving the house much other than to go to exams uh, the odd time I actually have to go to class or you know when I finally get to work like I've I've been missing so much work and I feel like I feel bad but then at the same time I kind of feel numb to it because again when you don't have the drive to do anything things just don't hurt as much and I I've, I've missed so much work and I am super super thankful for the people that I work with and my boss because they've been super supportive and understanding and have allowed me to take this time off and kind of just work towards getting better so I've been missing work and I've been, I don't think, I think I maybe went to classes, to each of my classes maybe once or twice in the whole semester here, of this semester. I just, I could not, I physically could not get out of bed and you know, I still struggle with getting out of bed now. Uh, when you're taking these antidepressant medications, they can cause negative side effects, meaning like it can cause insomnia and sweating and weight gain 
and um, fatigue and headaches or migraines and it's just this whole list of negative side effects which sometimes it's like do the negative side effect or do the positive side effects outweigh the negative and um, it's just a, a, a trial and error type thing you just have to keep trying different antidepressants until you find the right one that works for you and so far I think I'm on my I think I'm on my third or fourth antidepressant uh, the other ones were just not working at all and some of them were making me feel worse instead of better just mood wise I've been feeling I guess like I said alone and kind of like I've never drowned before but I can imagine drowning and that's kind of how I feel like it's just like I'm trying to go up for air I'm trying to get towards the surface but I can't and I know it's just gonna take a little while longer it's not fun drowning basically drowning in your own emotions I guess and it's just it's it's hard like depression is not fun obviously I mean it's not something you want to get and it's not something you you ever think you're gonna have to deal with but I mean it's part of life and I just feel like it's at this point it's kind of just taking control of my life and I don't like that I just I want control of my life back I want to be able to get up in the mornings I want to be able to go to work I want to be able to go to school I want to be able to finish my schoolwork without having to ask for an extension I want to be able to like get up in the morning and look at myself and say hey you know today's gonna to be a good day or you know what I feel good today I don't think I've actually had that feeling in a very very long time and I mean that depresses me even more but it's just I guess it, it comes down to like mindset and I have to work on that and I'm going to go see a counselor pretty soon and I was recommended to go to find a counselor that deals with cognitive behavioral therapy I think which is just basically them uh, training you or helping you to think more positively and honestly I, I've just been trying to deal with it day by day like with depression you can't really make long-term goals because you don't know how you're gonna feel in the long term and depression is just a day-by-day -day thing and you just you get up each day and you just work through it and I mean there's not really much you can you can do to like it's not a speedy recovery it takes time that's the one thing I've had to realize is that this isn't gonna like be fixed overnight it's gonna take time and it's gonna take you know different medications and people to help me through this it's gonna take God it's gonna take myself and it's just gonna be a process and something I have to go through and I it sucks now but I think about how I'm going to be better for it I think in the future like now that I've gone through this I am more sympathetic and I understand more of people who've gone through depression or are going through depression I I now see what it does and how debilitating it can be and that this is a real thing like it's not that I never thought depression wasn't a real thing it's just because when you haven't experienced it, you can't really understand what a person goes through when they go through depression. And now that I have, I can honestly, I can honestly relate to those people, and I have compassion and sympathy for them because I know how hard it is, and I know how much it takes just to get, get through a day. And I don't know. I so I think just by the end of this, I am going to be better for it. I've. And I'm going to have grown in myself and in my faith a lot like I have never trusted God more than this time in my life I've never prayed more I've never talked to God more I've never like it's just I'm I guess the only positive in this is that I have been leaning on God more than my own self like because I had to realize, it took me a while, but I had to realize that there was no way I was going to do this by myself. There was no way I was strong enough to, to get through the last year here and finish school. There was just, there was just no way I was doing it by myself. And the only reason, like I said, I got through it is on the strength of God and my mom. And 
this this illness has just brought me closer to God, I think, and I'm very thankful for that. And if this is what I had to go through for God to kind of like get my attention to say, hey, you need to trust me more, then this is what I have to go through. And it's a small price to pay to, to grow in your faith and to have a deeper relationship with God. So I'm very, very thankful for that. So I, I'm working right now on just trying to get myself to work. Like it's like one thing at a time when you have depression. Before I was just focused on trying to get through school and now I'm just going to be focused on getting myself to work. And it's it's going to be hard, but I've just, you know, sometimes I've found like I just have to force myself. The hardest thing is just the this insomnia that I've gotten from this. It's really really bad I mean I was always a night owl like I had already been a night owl I could stay up super late but with this now I cannot sleep like I'm not tired at all I take I've taken two or three melatonins at night and it just nothing I, I cannot sleep I just it feels like my brain is just wired like it will not shut off and so then when I do finally fall asleep, obviously I'm exhausted and then I can't get up in the morning and then I end up sleeping until like noon or one or two. I think the longest I slept for once was four in the afternoon. And you know, when you sleep into the afternoon, you don't feel good when you wake up. Like it doesn't matter that I got the required amount of sleep, you get up in the afternoon and you feel groggy and you feel gross and you like it triggers headaches and you just feel Ugh, like it's and then you you kind of like you don't have that time to go from between like you know waking up kind of getting awake and then going to do stuff and it's like by the time I get up to do something it's just too late to do anything and then I just have no energy to, I had no energy to do my homework and it was just it's just been really really awful with that and I hate that because I used to be able to I could have like five hours of sleep and get up at six in the morning, six thirty in the morning and head off to work for eight or nine and make it through the whole day and then be fine. And now I can't do that and it's really frustrating because there's so many things that I used to be able to do that I just I can't do now and it's again it's been a learning process like having learning how to cope and deal with these restrictions that I now have and these issues that I'm now experiencing. So if you have questions about which medications I've tried, which ones haven't worked for me, uh, just let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll, I'll answer those. That is basically what my depression is right now. Like currently, obviously I'm not cured, but uh, now I've got four months off of school to figure out what is going to help me and what is going to help me to get back to myself because I miss myself it just it's it I think the thing that bums me out too is like when I do have to go out I have to pretend that I'm okay I mean I don't have to but I mean number one depression can make people uncomfortable and number two I didn't want people to constantly treat me differently just because I was going through this so I only told a select few people that this is what was happening because you know, obviously you don't want to be fake with everybody and it was nice to just tell people and be able to be yourself. And I could be more open and honest and I didn't have to act all cheery and positive like because they knew what I was going through so they didn't expect me to be cheery and positive all the time. Now obviously those select few will be all of you so anyone who watches this will know what I'm going through and, and what I've been dealing with. I just want to be open and honest and so I don't have to be totally fake anymore because being fake is not good and it sucks and it takes a lot of energy for me to go out and pretend to be something I'm not. I mean, maybe I could be an actor because lots of people have not noticed. <laughs> It'll be nice to just get this off my chest and like I said, this is something, you know, it's really personal to me so I don't, like I said, I'm not doing this to get sympathy or to make people feel bad for me or anything. I just wanted you to know that this is, this happens and this happens to people and this is a real thing. and. Just, you never know who, you never know what a person is going through, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, is 
you never know what problems they're having you never know really the struggles that they're dealing with and just because somebody puts on a smile and looks happy doesn't mean that they are and that's the one thing I'm trying to get across is that you know everybody has stuff and I guess we can't be judgmental or I don't know not you got to be able to cut people some slack sometimes because you just don't know what's going on in their life and that's what I've learned from all this I'm surprised I made it through this without crying I honestly a lot of you who know me my friends know that I don't really cry in public or in front of people and honestly through this I cried in front of my professor when I went to go talk to her I was so embarrassed I kept it, I was just I started like the tears just started coming when I was explaining what was going on with me and I kept apologizing telling her that I was sorry that I was crying and that I wasn't doing it to make her feel worse for me but I mean I never cried in front of someone like that before and to cry in front of your professor you just know you've hit rock bottom but I can laugh at it now but it was pretty depressing when it happened last year so I have been a lot more emotional at times like it's not that I cry like all the time I'll I don't like I said I don't normally cry in front of people there will be the off chance that I might cry in front of somebody if something triggers me but most of the time I keep my crying to myself and I just cry to God basically I think I'm going to draw this to a close I don't know how long this video is going to be uh, hopefully it's not too too long and yeah I just I hope you guys uh, can kind of understand um, more about depression in a sense. I know I didn't really talk this, the you know scientific stuff, not scientific, the uh, medical uh, aspects of depression, but like I said, I just wanted to tell you my story and as I'm not like well versed in depression and everything that surrounds it, I, I didn't want to make a video where I'm like telling you guys stuff that I don't really know. Um, basically, I'm just taking it one day at a time and working my way back to being healthy. And that's all you can really do. So, yeah. I hope you guys... Well, it's hard to enjoy a video about depression. <laughs> so, I hope I didn't bum you guys out too, too much. And uh, thank you for... If you've made it through the whole video, thank you for watching and listening to me. It, that is the one thing is sometimes it feels when you have depression it feels like people don't listen to you or you know you're not heard anymore and it's just when somebody does it's it feels so nice like it feels like okay somebody does care somebody somebody you know wants to know how you're doing or wants to know how you're feeling kind of thing like it's it's really difficult when somebody looks at you you know somebody who doesn't know what you're going through and then says oh how's it going and in your head you're thinking well I could tell them the truth or I could just go with the easy answer oh, I'm doing okay so definitely definitely is let's see it is a battle every day to to try to be you know, not be normal but feel okay but anyway yeah so I'm going to conclude this video. Uh, if you have any more questions or you want me to kind of update you on what is, how I'm doing with um, my recovery, <laughs> I'm going to call it recovery, recovery of myself, uh, just, you know, uh, let me know in the comments below, give the video a thumbs up. Just, yeah, just let me know if you want me to keep you updated and, and you, or if you want to know more, I can, I can. I could probably talk for another 20 minutes about this. I mean, it's a lot that goes into this, and there's a lot I've been dealing with. So, but I, like I said, I don't want to bore you or put you to sleep or anything. So, yeah, anyway, for the last time, I promise I'm concluding this video. I hope you guys are doing well, and if you are going through the same things I am, then believe me, I understand completely, and I sympathize, and I am empathetic towards you, and you know what? just I'm praying for you I'm praying for anyone who is struggling with this kind of mental illness and it's all I can really do especially when I don't know all of you but I'm rambling again okay goodbye I it just
Goodbye.